not working. You're about to blast that guy, though. Yeah, no, I'll just leave it off in the bus. <laughs> okay, perfect. We'll they didn't speak loudly enough. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for being here. We are as excited for you all to come and look at what we've been building and what we've been designing for um, since June of 2014 is when we broke ground. So first and foremost, thank you for coming all the way out here in the desert to come see what, what Elon's created. Um, for starters, my name is Sophie Grzynski. I'm a construction engineer here on the construction management team. Uh, primarily, I work on electrical um, contracting. And My name is Bobby Tassol. I work in construction finance. I make sure Sophie and her team doesn't spend too much money. <laughs> uh, it's it's been a challenge. I've been here for a couple of months, and it's been a challenge, but uh, getting through it. Yeah, the easiest way to make things go faster is money. So I want to work here. still make them go faster <laughs> with less money is when the real innovation you're not taking a collection up, are you? <laughs> yes. So how long have you been here? Um, I started working here three months ago. Uh, yeah, three months as well. Is Tesla going to put solar panels on the roof? Um, it's not exactly sure when we're going to yet um, because of how quickly the build out is going. And so it's kind of a balance of do we want to start now and just keep producing? Uh, keep, keep so How much electrical power are you using right now? A lot. Exactly. <laughs> well, just a broad, the broad you got three gigawatts. I'm sure it's a big number. You gotta get a big block or something up there that just shoots out. Yeah, how much we're using and how much we can cap with electrodes of the batteries, all the way until not only finishing them as batteries, but putting them um, in battery packs for power walls and power packs and eventually for the Model 3. Um, so the design of this Gigafactory now, when fully functioning, is going to be 150 gigawatts per year, um, which is unbelievable, basically. And they won't make the Model or X batteries here, the 18650s? No, just 2170. Wow. So that means no, no model S or X actually yeah. either, I guess. Maybe. Mm -hmm. and I, also and because of that, we did not shut down anything for this party. So our power wall and power pack line is in production right now. We're going to be walking through a live production floor. Before that, we're going to be walking through a live construction site. So the idea of you guys staying all together is super important. If you cannot hear my voice or Bobby's voice, you're not in the right spot. Um, you're going to see people in lifts and lifting um, all kinds of heavy equipment. Please be aware that it's going to be here. We want you to have the greatest time possible. If there's anything that you need or think you may need, please ask Bobby or myself. Um, and that includes taking photos. We encourage you to take photos and videos. Um, the entire night is being live streamed online. And so, building is your playground. Nothing is off limits. Um, so take photos, take selfies, take videos. It's all encouraged. Um, make sure that everyone here tonight gets Safety is incredibly important. There's a lot of dangerous things. There is very dangerous things. There's a lot of 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 dangerous things.
wish to, um, to be as gentle with them and to keep them through their emotions as possible. So um, they're really great to, to work with. Getting your raw materials for the, for the lithium is that from the Atacama Desert? Is that where you primarily source it? Uh, that I, don't, I don't, know. don't know. Experts at the end of the tour may be able to answer that question, uh, but we can follow up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we apply a solvent to this dry powder in the mixing rooms here to make a liquid slurry. We would then pump that slurry all the way down to the far end of this room on the ground floor. The very end of there, we have a coating booth. We're similar to a printing press. We take that liquid slurry and apply it to a very thin piece of metal substrate that is being unrolled on this very large roll. This wet slurry on top of the substrate is then passed towards us inside the first row of this oven. Every one of these booths has an airflow inlet and airflow outlet at a very prescribed temperature and flow rate. In order to control the evaporation rate as that uh, foil comes down in the oven. By the time it gets here, we again have dry active material on the top of the substrate. We then take that foil, turn it vertical and come to the top where we have our second coating booth. And then what was the bottom of that foil is now the top. And we apply another layer of active slurry to the top and then it dries in a similar fashion going back down in that direction. So by the time we get to the far end, we have dry active material on both sides of this metal substrate. So every one of these chambers has an air in and air out, as the air of meat is picked up a lot of this liquid solvent into the vapor phase. So all those outlet air ducts are routed together, and the very end of the room on top, you see those large ducts going into the second floor through that wall. So 
So right on the other side of that wall, we have a solvent recovery system, where we take all that solvent in the air and scrub it back out to clean the air. And then the air comes right back to the same oven in a closed loop fashion. So this air never leaves the building. The liquid solvent that was condensed out in that system is then piped out to our utility yard, where we refine and clean the solvent as well. And that solvent is then pumped right back here into our mixing room. And the solvent is in a closed loop fashion. So on a net basis, the only material that enters or leaves this room is the active material and the metal substrate. So when we started off, this oven used to be by far the largest power consumer of any piece of equipment in the factory. But Tesla and Panasonic engineers have worked together to refine how both this oven and that solvent recovery system operate in conjunction. And we've been able to cut the power of the system by over 80%. So this is oven one of line one of phase one of Gigafactory one. Oven two goes right here, and every one of the savings we've put in is an investment, and this first oven is propagated going forward. How, how, uh, where's the heat coming from? Is it uh, natural gas? Or There's no natural gas anywhere at this facility. The only way we have heat is through electricity. The room itself is cooled. The oven is well insulated, so the room itself doesn't get very warm. Thanks so much for your time, Tyler. A little bit no, on a tight schedule. Thank you. Thank you. the conventional water heater. Yeah, was it an emergency shower? Yeah, it's an emergency shower. They, they warm the water. So, because it takes a good time. Yeah, yeah. Take a good shower. You and you should do it. We're continuing walking. So, now we're walking north. We're still in section C. We're walking towards section B, which is also still in its line. That's in So, as the mixing and the co drive, we're now going into the dressing rooms. These are the offices. Offices. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, the utility is spread out um, in every room. Um, so as well, um, the top cap and the can is also going to go here to the east. Um, right here, this part of the floor, um, we're going to go into the pressing rooms, which is where they press out um, those giant holes that we were just talking about that went through the office. Will this factory feature bicycles for the employees? <laughs> uh, I had to step on a bullet right on your hand. It's got to get a step on it. Sure, Okay. Security. <laughs> I go there and I pet her and I say, Who's coming away? Daddy's an Iceland right now. Nobody's coming home. We're on the road, so we're just going to hang out here. We're going to go to the gate. 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 They need to register for their warranty. This is the pressing machine. She said it's basically a giant rolling pin. However, this machine is owned by Panasonic and they wanted to respect Panasonic's privacy under the request of uh, not displaying it. Proprietary technology.
kind of being on site and, and working with us hand in hand. Um, everything you see here is a partnership with Panasonic. They've been a great partner. We've fully integrated our engineering designs, all of the construction, the commissioning. We work together on not only a daily basis, but an hour by hour basis. They actually work here inside the factory with us, their engineers and all of their employees. Keep moving and talk to some more experts. Looks like they got three rolling setups. <laughs> or more. Hey guys. Hello. Hi. Come on over. Hi guys. Hi. All right. Hello. Who's this guy? This is Abby. Abby. Hi, Abby. She's learning. Yes, she is. <laughs> she, has another, she has another real life job, though. <laughs> Hi, my name is Matt. I'm an engineer on the factory design team. And I'm Brian. I'm one of the engineers that coordinates the installation of this equipment. We're going to tell you a little bit more about what happens in this room. We're in the cathode uh, press over here, so you just walk by three huge presses. I guess you guys just came from the coat and dry ovens over there. So at that point, we've evaporated all of the solvent that was used in the mixing process. And we're left with the uh, electrode, um, the aluminum foil, and the active material on that foil. So what we're trying to do now is get rid of the air that is uh, in the place of where the solvent was, basically. So what we're doing is compressing that material down to a really, really specific uh, and precise thickness, and that's roughly the diameter of a human hair. Um, and really what we're after is a target porosity in the material after compression. Um, we're trying to strike that really fine balance, I guess, and just to give you an idea for, for what we're after, um, if you compress this material too much, you're actually interfering with the flow of the lithium ions going into and out of the uh, electrode material. And if you don't compress this enough, you're basically missing out on a lot of energy density that you can be having. Um, what we're doing is trying to pack as much active material as we can inside of each cell. Um, so Brian will tell you a little bit more about how this actually happens. Yeah, a lot of you guys do the, uh, the material flow right now. Basically from the coat and dry ovens, uh, the output of that is a, a coil that's just been coated with that active material and it'll come into this buffer rack area. Feel free to come in and take a look. Basically, this is just storage for processed material waiting for, for downstream processing. So oh, yeah. any one of these bays in the rack is coiled, basically. It has active material on it. Uh, down the center of the aisle, there's a crane that'll retrieve that coil. It'll bring it down here to an automated guided vehicle, a little robot, an AGV, that will take the coil, it'll walk it down this ground. The lines on the floor that are taped are magnetic strips used by the AEG robots. Loaded onto another AGV, that, that robot that will carry the material, and take it back into the buffer rack. So that whole uh, coil is the cathode? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, so this is all processing for the, the cathode portion of the electrode. Uh, and a similar process, just different. Yeah. different. It's, a, it's a royal coil. Royal royal yeah. yeah. So it's basically parallel processing uh, to this point in use with just different materials. So, at production, how many humans are working in this room? Uh, initial startup will probably be like four to five in this area. They'll basically be monitoring the AGVs to make sure that the automated portions are working as, as intended. Um, and then there's also, they're checking the tolerances of the, uh, the, the film and the, the foil itself. So they're just working with pure quality assurance. Quality assurance, um, a little bit of tuning as, as the material's processing, but they're measuring it pre and post. Is this the bottleneck of the whole process? Is letting them sit in the spray? There, there's no actual like cue time or anything like that. It's basically just building up work in progress. So as this material is ready, there's kind of a backlog of material. Basically, they're building a buffer, it sounds like, yeah, in case one process has to shut down. How many buffers, I guess, how many batteries? Like, can you buffer in there? It's like a, a 
bus load. Yeah, so basically this storage area supplies, um, I don't know the, the total or uh, kilowatt hours of batteries, but it's basically everything you've seen in section B and C, it's all the, the cell manufacturing that is stored in there. That can maybe quite a bit of batteries. Thank you for your time. Oh, here's one of the robots. AGVs are a big part of what Panasonic does, and they're also a big part of what Tesla does. Um, so we just passed by an AGV that is going to work with batteries right there in the press room. Um, we're also going to see some other AGVs now that we're entering, um, about to enter um, Tesla's realm. Who makes the autonomous vehicles? Uh, uh, so pre now we're in the pre cell aging room. It's company called Premix. Pre Premix, okay. Thank you. Uh, and we're going to hang out properly in the space. Oh. When we get to the Tesla uh, assembly area, uh, we'll see a bunch of small things uh, that pass around. Uh, uh, and it's somewhat of a have they looked into Kiva systems for robots at all? That you know of? I would have to ask the engineer. Oh, okay. not sure. Um, oh, those are really solid. Insulated metal wall panels. Hour by hour basis. So you'll walk to a place yes. in the morning, three hours later, all the way around. So I guess that's the first time that's on the front end. Yeah, there's the Cell aging room. We'll actually get to see robots in action in the actual production shortly. Yeah, here's something I, I looked at. I just saw on the road today that there's a set of these. Well, and so in California, for earthquake, you always have to have a shear wall. So they do stuff like this to keep this from collapsing this way. But that means it can still collapse this way. So in California, you have somewhere else a shear wall going the other way. But I noticed that entire building had no shear walls in it. The one that was open, I had zero of this. Not the right person to answer the question. Um, I know there's a lot of work like that's been done, and we're right. essentially right. on the same fault line as California. Right, so that's, there's that's a, my point. There's, there's a whole no rule in, uh, in Nevada that says you have to have it. Uh, I can still shake pretty darn hard. I know our seismic engineering team has kind of done a deep analysis of it. We can definitely put you in touch with you to get some more information on how they're... I mean, this was, done, this was done specifically for that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. BRBs, I think, these are called embracing. We're waiting to enter. The factory is still currently in production. They are not stopping production yeah, have you seen any, for the tours. Any stadium down in California? Who's us as volunteers to help kill Apparently, they don't want to see 100,000 people get dead in one earthquake. Oh, I got enough lithium on me right now to move my car a good 20 feet. <laughs> this guy would be worth something. Can't okay, you just go out in Nevada and kind of just scrape a little dust and <laughs> put a little bit of sprinkle it? It's right on top of the little room and sprinkle it on the battery pack. Yeah. It's in your body. It's yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Just like hydrogen, except for it's not in the future. Now, talk about range anxiety. <laughs> Where the heck do you Nobody plug in a hydrogen that. car? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We're waiting on the next one with a couple of sulfur specs. They make such, such cool stuff. That's why I look at it too. It's like, other side of the country. I'm sorry. Sorry. Is that the rat mouth? Just trying to keep everybody interested while we're standing here. That group's going that way. Oh, we get to see more cool stuff. Yeah, they all jumped off a Columbus. 
While we're waiting, why not take a little look up? Conduit lines, chilled water, outside air, inside air. Most areas are three stories, they were to, we were told. However, uh, first story and second story is generally full floor. Most of third story is a mezzanine. She said is used for utility storage of certain uh, things such as like compressed air, nitrogen, so on and so forth. I gotta say that my, my initial impression, of course, a lot of shit, was it's like a lot of wasted space. Like, I mean, it's huge, but what are they doing up there? That looks like it's a nothing. Probably. They're still building. Okay. Sorry, we gotta wait. Storage. Yeah. I don't know, the whole, the whole project, obviously. I did not picture this. No, I thought I expected some. Okay, this isn't a drop forge. Well, I, I kind of really felt it would be more like a regular kind of steel building and it has some equipment in it. There's a lot of it. Big more noise. Yeah, more noise. I mean, even the Tesla factory, it's a big building full of noisy equipment. But, you know, the Tesla factory doesn't have a nice space like that. But it was naked, it was the most of the Tesla factory. Here we go. He's the guy that keeps it going. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm doing my job. Okay, thank you. Do you need any help? It's a cell aging room. Oh. There's a robot up there. Do you want to take pictures of it? So Go for it. Oh, we like robots. I don't know. Would our cars technically be considered robots now? Uh, yours might. Mine isn't. Another year or two. Don't worry. This place is absolutely massive. This is the cell aging room. The cells are placed on the racks with uh, basically robotic lifts, autom automated robotic lifts. Very, very impressive. There are some floor rail systems, it looks like. And here we are. Wow. Uh, okay, there's a, a third floor up there. Oh, I can get the speech. Oh, it's so cute. a lot of uh, issues packaging all sorts of different things um, yeah it's a uh, much better in the process from shipping it from Asia all the way over waiting for three months for it and then you know figuring out what's going on so uh, the other thing to think about this bracing we see this bracing is uh, really that we can build this uh, factory modularly so we kind of have different squares that we build um, that basically kind of show some of them are cell pieces some of them are uh, module pieces and so as kind of our, the demand kind of comes up and comes down, we can build different squares of, of this factory. Um, okay. I mean, basically it kind of lets us kind of build very much faster, um, almost at ludicrous speed. So, and so, uh, you know, there's also some really cool stuff with the automation here. Uh, basically cells get made on the third floor, come on down, uh, basically get uh, pushed down with a bunch of cranes. And to talk a little bit more about that is uh, my colleague Meredith here. Yeah. Hey guys, you might have heard a little bit about um, ASRS systems in the other room. If you didn't, it's called an automated storage and retrieval system. It's basically an automated warehouse. So going down each of these aisles, you'll have really, really tall cranes that go up the entire uh, height of the aisle. It's fully automated, so that's being controlled um, by our software. 
to pull the correct thing out, put it in the right spot, uh, and keep doing that day in, day out in a super, super dense manner. You can fit a lot of cells in this warehouse. This is tens of millions of cells uh, in what you see right here. They're gonna be stored in these trays, uh, which we call formation trays. So they go into these trays at the end of the cell assembly process, and they'll live in this tray until we pick them out as uh, a Tesla product, which is a really, really cool thing. Uh, this is one of the ways that we're really showing uh, how dedicated we are to sustainability at this factory. Think of this entire warehouse as being completely full of cardboard. That's how we get our cells today. We get our cells in cardboard boxes, right, because they come across the ocean. So in addition to having weeks of inventory on the way to us, it's all in cardboard boxes. These plastic trays are gonna live in the factory. So every time that we use it, it just goes right back into the process. So it's a huge, incredible amount of savings. And that's just one of the examples of how we're doing this in this factory. Um, you probably also saw our little friends back there, little robot. Um, that's an example of our dedication to efficiency in this factory. We're making a really big factory, guys. It's gonna be a really big factory. We're gonna be moving a lot of stuff around in this factory. So leveraging robotics to move stuff around, in addition to helping build our product, is hugely efficient, and it's a really exciting way that we're pushing that cost down so we all can afford those Model 3s. So, you guys have any questions for us, or you wanna go see some Tesla manufacturing? This lift is to the third floor where cell manufacturing occurs. Yeah, there's manufacturing at the top, that's right. This is the storage. So, are these, when the are here, charged already? I think they have some amount of charge. The That's right, these are representative of the new, please don't touch them. Um, they're not going to shock you or anything, they're fine. Uh, we just mostly just don't want them to walk off when we're not looking. Um, yeah, these are representative of the new 2170 cells. Great. Awesome, you guys are going to go see some amazing Tesla manufacturing, so enjoy your time. We're super glad you're here. Thank you, Javier and Meredith. See if he goes and you see them walking around at the party. Casually offer them a drink and talk to them about that. Do you think they would mind if I hid in here and never let them find me? Hmm. I think you could get lost in here easy next week. Whoa. These are the utility grade power packs. Please take it all in as we keep moving. Okay, keep moving. All right. But I want one of those robots. Yeah. These are the utility grade power walls or power packs. They are being very adamant about not using Zoom. I'm sorry. Power pack modules. Oh, there's one right now. Now these units are riding on the magnetic strip on the floor. That one is not yet open. If you want the better view, be sure to watch the 4K 100 megabit upload that I will be doing. Live streams for your convenience. Here is the fun part. Air powered machinery.
This is a utility grade power wall pack. You can see coolant lines, battery management board, and the cells in their trays. Basically, this is a miniature Model S battery pack using slightly larger cells instead of smaller cells. falling a little behind, sorry. Testing. Oh. Moving up. Lunch. Oh. And who do we have over here? This is a Tesla right, so power wall. They are so quite large. Tesla side of the manufacturing process. So over here in our manufacturing facility, we're producing two different products right now. Over to your right, we have the home consumer product, which is the power wall. And over here to your left, we have the industrial product, which is the power pack. We just walked by our pod line. On the pod line is where we build the actual pods, which is the building block for our energy products uh, for both the power wall and the power pack. Inside of the power wall, we have one pod. Inside of the power pack, we have 16 pods. Those 16 pods uh, relate to 100 kilowatt hours of battery storage. And on the single power wall, it's 6.6 .6 kilowatt hours of battery storage. So to put that in perspective a little bit, you can run your, uh, let's see, 40 inch flat screen TV. You can run your 40 inch flat screen TV off a power pack for 347 days or off of a power wall for 23 days. And that's running continuously, right? 24 hours a day. Um, in front of us right here, we have a chassis for our Model S. So we are going to be building the battery prod or the battery modules and the battery packs for the Model 3 here at Giga Factory. And similar to the Model S, those batteries will go beneath the chassis um, to add additional uh, stability and weight to the bottom of the car. So that's it. Does anybody have any questions? It's working. Good. We have three lines. We have the pod line, we have the power wall line behind us, and the power pack line manufacturing over on the left hand side. Power pack cabinets. The tour we are expanding up to the second floor here in about two and a half three weeks. All ready for its new owner. It has some additional electronics in it. Here is the utility grade power pack. Coolant box. Uh, inside there is a whole bunch of electronics. Yeah, if the power wall is looking cool. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's, it's just all contained. Yeah. Yes, all self-contained. But this is just they, they That's part of the reason why Tesla batteries are so much better. Yeah. Well, they actually thought about the engineering. The thermal. Yeah. 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 One, of, one of the packs back there, the, you can see the, the, yeah, so we have a radiator, yeah, no, fan, okay, that's coolant, radiator and fan, and coolant. Yeah, so this is a fully self-contained thermal unit. So self-contained refrigeration so unit. Dark. And it's yeah, actually so biased, or if you have a thermal event in one of these pods, it's not going to damage the pod above it or the pod below it. You can actually exchange out just one of those 6.6 .6 kilowatt hour pods for another. It doesn't damage the whole pod. So hot swappable, very smart. 16. 16. There's 16 power pack modules per whole utility grade power pack. And as long as I kind of wandered over here, 
instead of having offices, they said, this is all open to promote people working with others. Don't want anybody closed off, want them all working together. Please like, subscribe, and use my referral codes if you would like to see more videos like this in the future. Okay, we're going to continue on just a little bit. Once again, the full 4K copy will be uploaded this weekend. It's going to be approximately 70 gigabytes in size by the time the tour is over. They are actually making the casings for the home power packs, power wall power packs. over here here's containers of cells ready to go inside the power packs power wall power packs pallet jacks are lead acid and there goes the robot We are way behind. I'm, this is better than a kid in a candy store. Yeah. They recycle everything they can. Tesla Energy. Oh, there he goes. It's so cute. Okay, all storage. Bonus points for the Cushman. Parts from Bossard. Quality manufacturing. Now that is packaging. Trust me, they're keeping a close eye on us. Security is everywhere. These are all completed and ready to ship out. Cabling, high voltage cabling. Oh, 
Now we're at a rest break. Or Wall Market. This is like military grade stuff. Here's the robot control systems. Arvin. Oh, I'm sorry. Just very, very impressive. Yeah, enjoying it. Good. You're lucky I haven't wandered off and hid somewhere yet. <laughs> Keep an eye out. <laughs> And we're going to be going. Oh, it got windy out. Look out, Point Shuttle. I'll let you know when I get okay. I'll let you know when I get okay. And fortunately, a nasty windstorm has kicked up, so we're kind of hiding out inside right now. Uh, they're actually watering down. Uh, this is part of the construction site. Construction has not stopped at all, even during the tour. But uh, I mean, but this is crazy. They got a dust and windstorm going on here, and we're going to be boarding the shuttle to go to look to Lookout Point. And it's raining now. It looks like we might not get to go to Lookout Point due to incoming storms. They're locking down the doors and hatches. So let's wander over here. Something that kind of blows me away is, other than the talking echo from people's talking, it is actually really silent in here. Impressively silent. And for the person that asked, no, Paul Blart isn't sneaking around, but Tesla security uh, is absolutely everywhere. Aluminum, is it steel? Can't tell. Uh, not sure who owns the dog. It's supposed to be a service dog. But uh, not a place I'd bring a dog. Anyways, the big thing is there's a lack of noise in this facility. Even while they're working, it's just everything so streamlined, so quiet. It's just pure amazing. The efficiency level. We're going to keep back here, sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, but anyway, that, so that's like a, a, a test uh, set that we'll be benchmarking other other cells. And uh, 
Elon speech won't be for quite a while. Tour first. So not much to see at the moment. We're waiting. I'm trying to keep the stream active and not start and stop it. Uh, probably will lose live stream if we go to the lookout point. We drove over this way. Raining. Oh, that feels good breeze. No 4G or 3G for the live stream. There is virtually zero cell signal on AT&T, US Cellular, excuse me, AT&T, Sprint, and T-Mobile in here. So the kind of bottleneck whatever their Wi-Fi can provide. So if you want to see it in the high quality, please watch the 4K stream that will be uploaded this weekend. Yes, it is a factory of dreams. kind of stuck in this area, so I'm just going to keep walking in circles for a little bit here. First hottie you see, where's Bonnie? <laughs> uh, so we're still kind of corralled here. Water. And they will not let me over there. I would like to go to the robot control system. Model 3 more just for the 
Mind if I respond to it the way I, I heard it put? Just think of it like Ford to Lincoln. You got your luxury version with all the bells and whistles, and then you got the everyday person car. So while you, Lincoln and Ford might be underlying the similar vehicles, the Lincoln's going to have that final, fin, final touch that you know makes it a, a step above all others. So you're going you're going luxury versus functionality. Well, you got to also remember a lot of people might not have autopilot hardware, so this is giving them the the financial reason to upgrade to the model that has autopilot. That watch is a knockoff. Gray Tesla hat and white beard, Brian says hi. Uh, am I missing it here? So what's your take on this guy? I don't know. I don't know who was on. Very impressive. impressive. Yeah. Yeah, I know. We got a lot of work to do still. We got a lot of progress in the years. Do you have a son named Brian? I do. He says hi. I see. Okay, okay. just say hi to Brian. <laughs> Hi, Brian. See, hey, how are you there? He's down here. There's Brian. See? That's hysterical. Yeah, he's I don't watching. understand. So this is what, part of the stream? Yeah, I'm live streaming. Oh, that's really funny. Hi, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Brian is watching. And he's doing the stream. <laughs> here, you can watch it later on my channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, our son is watching. Yeah, he says hi. That's hysterical. <laughs> okay, looks like I made uh, your father's day. Yeah, pretty bad. That's the, they're holding off, but doesn't look like we're gonna get to go to lookout. What was up there that they say? Cooling system? Uh, yeah, I think some. Uh, Where's our tour guide? Did she go to start at the beginning? Uh, okay, I gotta. I wanna find an employee here. Oh, he's got a microphone. So it's like important. No. Sorry if I'm getting anybody dizzy. I don't want to be rude to anybody. But more cement trucks. They're pulling all the cement trucks off the, off the, the build. Yep. We're live streaming right now. The guy from Zero. Oh, Bjorn? Yeah, uh, he got on a later shuttle bus. And by that point, the line was pretty long, so I don't know. He's around here somewhere. What did they say is that lookout point? Oh, okay. Oh, the, the fa just the factory as a whole? I'll take it. <laughs> if we can get up there. Uh, they're dumping the last of their concrete 
Oh, it looks like they just poured that today. Wow. Does it look like we'll be able to go to Lookout Point? Uh, probably later, once the weather okay. dies down. Yeah. So, right up there? Yeah, um, well, So, if you stand right here, you see where the road takes you up? So, right up that road to the right, there's a big tent up there, and you can, like, look and see all the mountains. That is a battery-powered UTV. Excuse me? It'll take you about a half hour to walk there. <laughs> so the shuttle's right there, so you can just ride in the car. The car will take you right up. That way you don't have to walk through the back. The shuttle will take you back down and drop you off here. And you just walk right back to the main party. We don't want you guys walking through construction, so we'll drive you up. We need the sweetest. We have ATVs. ATVs? Not like. Let's see if we can go listen in on some interesting conversations. Oh, yep, yep. Hey, you want to say hi? Everybody's watching. Oh, that's interesting. That moves. Oh, yeah, it scares the heck out of my... Yeah. That's an amazing camera. It's a built-in gimbal. Big difference. Here, just watch. Watch the, uh, the phone and watch the camcorder. And this has got stabilization on it as well. It's that much of a difference. Well, we're, we were kind of hoping the electric semi trucks would be here. Um, I was hoping to say hi to Jerome again. He's an awesome guy, and I enjoyed our long chats before. But uh, so far, I did not see the semi. So that's probably still sitting in Hawthorne. So if I can score a look, we might be able to see it in about two weeks when I, or three weeks when I take my next road trip down back to Hawthorne again. Shut down the camcorder. I'll stitch the uh, video files together later. But my camcorder is not going to have enough battery to last. So right now, I'm, what you see right now until further notice will not be on the 4K upload version. This is live stream only. They're, they keep checking the weather and the wind, that's why they keep opening the door. Because we're going to be going up high on one of those mountains. And our altitude is already pretty high. Pretty high. It's about 100 degrees outside right now. Oh, they're still dropping. They started dropping concrete again. They probably drove down the road and went to the guard. So what they said is we're not going to get to go to the lookout because there's lightning strikes and it's unsafe. Okay. Simply from a safety standpoint. They Makes said sense. they could theoretically open it later, but it may not be anytime soon. Okay. So we're going to probably just... Whoa! 
Yeah, you can see these big bolts of lightning. They want us to get Did you guys see that? Because apparently there's serious lightning up there. So they just, they're going to have to you hear it, and it's close. That was like three seconds. Yeah. So it's within like, you know, a half a mile. Yeah, I mean, so they're going to have us probably just walk back to the event, which is apparently very close. Uh, despite the sunshine, yeah, despite the sunshine, uh, Actually, we were sit standing here watching seriously big lightning strikes. Uh, I doubt the stream's going to pick it up, but uh, I mean, this is that's why they won't let us up there yet. And talk about working hard workers, they are still at it, despite working in the rain, I'm sure they appreciate the cool down. Uh, there's one now. It is possible we might be able to go back up there. Oh, uh, I mean this is a seriously bad storm. Hi, John. Ready to go? Oh. 